Hi everyone, I'm Victoria, an amazing content marketer here at BizMe, and welcome to another episode of By Accident or Design, a snackable LinkedIn series that celebrates honest moments in business, marketing, and design, from mistakes to wins and the wow moments in between. I have today a special guest who is not only an expert in his field, but a master at it, if I might say so myself. So introducing Panos, Panos is a CEO of Learn Words. He has a PhD in educational technology and extensive work experience as a software engineer, e-learning researcher, science educator, and before even starting the startup route with Learn Words, is that he was actually in the European Parliament as a policy advisor for research and innovation. That is a very extensive professional resume, Panos. Wow. <laughs> I feel old now. I, <laughs> I, I guess it's a, it's a verification that in our lifetimes, we will have to change many professions. So I guess this is why learning is also important because we have to keep learning and that's what keeps us active and keeps us doing performing to the best of our abilities. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, and the fact that you've done so much in such a span of time, it's like you've gathered this gem of expertise. It's it's just amazing. And, and that being said, I want to dive right into the questions, which is what's how have you seen the on learning space, the online learning space in corporate and tech change over the years that um, I think a lot of people might see the obvious, but you with your expertise, what's some things that you see that people kind of overlook that you've like, this has definitely been a change. Mm. I guess in the past couple of years, we've so we've seen changes that uh, normally would have taken decades to to achieve and that's obviously because of covid and the and the pandemic and how people realize that e-learning can be the default mode of learning and that it works there was a there's an old joke amongst let's say e-learning experts and professionals that e-learning was a revolution always five years in the future it was never happening from the first time that people started using educational technology which used to be, I don't know, in the a, a couple of centuries ago, it was learning through, uh, you know, through the post by sending the letters, right. and then it was educational gramophone where you could re record, you know, the voice of a professor, and then people were exchanging gramophone records, and then it was educational radio, and then it was educational TV, and then you know the internet came, came along. But there was always something, uh, something missing. There was always you couldn't replicate the experience of a charismatic teacher within a, within a classroom. What we realize now, especially amongst the pandemic, is that we don't have to replicate that. We have sometimes good enough uh, if it works and if if it can help you perform at scale, if it can be efficient and and effective, and if there's sufficient uh, let's say incentive to use it, you can you can get your job done. So we're not here, e-learning is not here to, to replace, I guess, the, the most charismatic professors that you can find in a university. We still want, you know, our doctors to be trained in the best universities, <laughs> that, that's, that's for sure. But uh, definitely you can create uh, amazing transformative learning experiences at scale. Uh, you can reach people anywhere, anytime, in any country, of any background, and, and this can provide huge, uh, a huge driver for, for growth for, for everyone. That's true. And one thing I also, well, for me personally, have liked with the evolution of online learning is that it's now more inclusive of people with different learning styles, you know? Definitely. So instead of like having to read a block of text, I have the option to have audio. I have the option to watch a video. I can have a textbook, like being able to have that opportunity of just not being in a classroom alone and having that expand. That's something that I appreciate a lot. It's very important what you're saying. And this is also the original premise of multimedia, which means like different modes of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, of, a, of a medium or, or or of learning some people are visual and they prefer to see their images others prefer text others prefer to be in a classroom and uh, and uh, have a discourse with their with their fellow students or or teachers others just to be to be left alone and interact with a with a text we can do that now very very easily we can create uh, 
massive customization at scale. So you can have the same content repurposed in different modes and different styles. It can be passive, it can be interactive. At, some, at one point, you might want to go very deep in the knowledge. At another point, you simply want to, to skim through some text. Mm -hmm. You might be commuting and open your, uh, your mobile device and read something or, or uh, lying on, on a couch. All these things can work at the same time we we learn everywhere every every at every moment of our lives learning happens everywhere and this is something that we can harness and businesses realized that they can harness this value too in the past it used to be you know learning let's say in in, in a corporate environment uh most people understood the learning like throwing a hundred page PDF at you right. and, and you were you were an employee you had to do some uh, compulsory training so this is the PDF go there in a, in your in your desk and come back in two weeks and you will have been trained but that's not how it works that's not what we expect today we have our standards are uh, thankfully much higher yeah. people People have amazing interactive, engaging experiences with their mobile phones and their gaming devices. This is something that we should be able to replicate at the e-learning space. Not only that, but employees are now demanding from um, and, you know, employers, like, we want proper training. Like, training makes us feel secure. Training is a great way to do succession planning. So, and, and as you know, work itself, how we go, how we obtain our jobs remote or in person, the way that we expect training and, and development, it's now become like a really hot profession amongst people. So I want to segue into how things have changed and now how technology has like impacted online learning in a way where like, how do you think AI is going to impact learning and development going forward? I know a lot of people are talking about Gchat and, and all these different things, but I feel like as somebody who's in the thick of it, you can kind of foresee how AI, how technology, and how people are going to come together and kind of form a new way of learning. I think the 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 jury is still out, but everybody understands that this is hugely transformative, and not just in e-learning, anything in anything that has to do with uh, content creation. Uh, journalists discuss the same thing. Professors discuss the same thing. Uh, uh, scholars and academics. Uh, artists and, and creators, everybody's trying to see how this thing can, uh, can uh, influence the, their work and the quality of their content and their output. And every day here with my, with my co-founders and with our, with our employees, we are seeing amazing ideas and cases of how AI can be implemented in good or bad ways. Not everything works and not everything is as polished as we, we would like to, but I think in, in the long term it will be like that. For, for, for one thing, we see that there will be many layers of help for in, in content creation. And already uh, a, even ChatGPT has, has created a spark of creativity. Some mm -hmm. of it is just, uh, you know, bad content and bad copies. I was reading about a, a huge number of books that have been published on Amazon recently that have been generated completely by, uh, oh, yeah. by ChatGPT. So I guess there, there's going to be a mass... La layer of uh, low quality content on the other end uh, uh, creators can really take advantage of these tools and elevate their game create I think uh, it's kind of like a calculator you know like if yes. you put the wrong equation in you're gonna get the wrong answer garbage but in you, garbage out yeah garbage in garbage out that's what my so, professor used to tell me so you have to know what you're putting in and and i think People start to think like, oh my God, AI is going to take over everything. It's going to make everything really easy. But the thing is, it's not, you're not teaching robots. You're teaching another human being. So you still have to add a human element into it and consider things as well. You know? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I, I think the the floor will be elevated so the low the kind of content that you that, that you are, we are getting out of uh, when we are asking a web search uh, we are, we're doing a web search or we are we are uh, asking a, a tool or something the answers that we get will be at a much higher level already we are seeing that some of the answers are are much deeper and uh, but as we said all these answers are depending on other material that can be found out there in in content so Creators will have, I guess, a higher barrier and they will have to, 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 uh, to bring out all their creativity and do much more work in order to, to create stuff that will be truly amazing. So the base level will be elevated, but 
creators, true creators will have more tools at their disposal to create even more meaningful output for their, for their work. Frankly, we don't know. I, I think this is something that That's an honest okay, answer. We've seen we've seen in the industry in the industry as well. There is always uh, in the beginning, let's say, of industrialization. It was great to see the mass massively produced, cheap, affordable stuff that we could get, whether it was plastic, you know, or cars, or, right. or clothes, or anything else. But the handcrafted quality content is something that really shines, and people crave it, and it has a premium quality quality status. I think we may uh, enter an era we will we, we'll be receiving mass baseline content that will have a certain quality, much better than we can get now out of a random Google search. Uh, but there will be so much more need for the quality, creative, premium content that only humans and experts and professionals will be able to, uh, so to bring. Let me add to that to just segue into, I, I see where you're saying about like we have to step up the game. But apart from the, I think, quality of stepping up with AI, with technology, with trying to make your content shine amongst others that may not be as versed in a industry or topic as you, what's another thing that people struggle with when they create online courses? Well, uh, I think that the first problem, problem that we see uh, after speaking with uh, hundreds and even thousands of our customers is uh, you know, procrastination. That's the first problem. People, they, they are, somebody is expert in their field and they never start. And they are afraid about what will happen. There are so many courses out there, and they, and then they 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 never start. What we say is just you know start it. You don't have to produce a full course. You can mm -hmm. start by a mini course, but get it out there. Get some content out there. This is the the most important first step to get over your fear to be to get exposed. Have, let's create a 10 minute mini course and put it out there. The feedback will be immensely valuable for you. Just seeing, you know, a complete, even if it's not, you know, Hollywood level production, you will feel so much satisfaction by that. So this can be the, the first, uh, you know, this is a great way to, 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 to pass the, this first fear. And the second problem is that sometimes people spend too much time in developing a full course without right. testing it, without bringing it in front of an audience. So we've seen customers who spent six months in producing what they thought it would be the, the ideal content. And mm -hmm. when they test it with users, they see that there is no market fit. There is no people wanted some, something else. And again, here we can be flexible. We can start uh, low. We can start with a, with a pre-launch of a course. We can create our content put it out there, test it, and then uh, uh, keep enhancing it and create better and bigger and more uh, uh, and more solid versions of that, uh, of that course. And sometimes so you think, oh, this, uh, just for an example, like, oh, this course on how to construct muffins is going to be the next best thing. But because you have your face so close to the canvas, you don't see the huge picture and you realize that, okay, people actually don't want, they want to make cake muffins instead of just regular muffins. And that may be it. And then testing. You, so yeah. testing, test. It's important to test it with an actual audience. Get that feedback. This is a very important, uh, a very important process. And you have of, resources on how people can learn from when before, before, during, and after they've launched their course. So you yes, have resources on actually, learning well as well. Actually, actually, we do. This is a very important, very big part of what we do to help uh, uh, the creators and, and the course creators and the experts to to learn, to master these new medium. Somebody might be an, a professor with 20 years of experience, but they have never created e-learning content in the past, or they were never forced to promote or sell their online course. Right. So we have lots of materials to help them build their personal brand, think also about their design and the packaging of that content, but also how to think strategically about creating that content so that they can test it, they can improve it, and then uh, have at the end a, a, a complete uh, uh, product that they can uh, sell online. Okay, and then I'll just segue into like, what's one of the biggest personal lessons that you've learned that's followed you throughout your profession that you want to share today? I think so something that is really deep to, to me and also I guess in our, in our company here at LearnWorlds is that learning is a human superpower. It's uh, it's probably the only superpower that, that we have as far as, as I know. Like this is this is something that can it's definitely a social a driver of social change but but also of huge personal change so it can get us 
you know, to there are no limits to where it can it can get us. And by definition, we have we do it constantly, and we have to do it also in a professional capacity. Lifelong learning is uh, is uh, is something that we cannot uh, avoid, but we should also embrace and use it to our advantage, especially in times of uncertainty or in times of uh, of, of social totally and economical agree. instability. This is something that we totally uh, that we totally believe. Okay, and then I'm going to ask you a last question before we wrap up, and that's what's the happiest accident that led you to where you are now? Um, I guess the, the happiest accident was meeting my co-founders at the university because this is oh, how we, nice. we started. We are we're three co-founders. We studied in the same university, computer computer science, and then we, we realized that we have many things in common. One thing is that we were all children of educators, of teachers, like teachers or professors. So education was a big part. Was our family business, I guess, our family our family trade. And that's how we got together. We start building e-learning applications. That's how we started doing postgraduate studies of, uh, on e-learning. And several years after, we came together. We took our expertise and and we said, okay, let's build an outside of the academia. Let's build a, a product for actual people, for actual trainers. Let's empower them and uh, help them build build the best possible courses that they can. I guess that's a, a that has been a very defined moment for for all of us in terms that's of definitely a happy business. accident. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Panos, for sharing all of that. That was just it was amazing talking to you about education. I can see how excited you are about learning and sharing your experiences, which I think is a really good trait for someone who has a an entire startup that's based on learning. You know? And uh, before we go, where can our viewers find you if they want to connect with you or learn more about Learn Worlds? You can always visit our website, www.learnworlds.com. Uh, there you will find both our, our tool, our platform that allows you to create and sell online courses, amazing templates, and also lots and lots of content. Our, our own academy is fully packed with uh, training content to help you create the best possible version of your online course and think about how you can share and disseminate it, whether you are a, a, an individual pro, pro creator or a company that wants to train their customers or their employees. So that's the best way to, to connect and we will be happy to help you uh, uh, use e-learning for, for your business or your, your personal brand. That sounds nice. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, thank you so much, Panos. And uh, this is uh, another episode of By Accident Design. We have this on Tuesdays, and I hope you guys will join us again for another episode. And thank you again, Panos, for joining us. Everyone have a wonderful day.